Chapter 1. Introduction. Prophets and Prophecy. Prophets are recognized as those who receive messages from God the most common messages being those pertaining to the future. Hence, prophets often, but not always, are men or women who foretell the future. A prophecy, or forecasting the future, has been a very thankless task for God's prophets. Mankind generally has been more interested in the future than in the past, so it seems that they would be more likely to look to the prophets than to anyone else. Not so. True prophets have been among the least recognized and respected of all mankind, and throughout history they have been persecuted, driven, imprisoned, and killed. Why are prophets the object of so much rejection and abuse by society? Simply because society is usually wicked and they don't like to hear their misfortune or unhappy fate. For example, Jehoshaphat asked King Ahab, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides, that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil, 2 Kron. 18.6-7. Yet messages from God are always important. They give men a chance to repent, to change their lifestyles and their faithful futures. Even a man's eternal destiny may be changed. If someone warned you that by traveling down a certain road you would meet with disaster, would you heed or ignore the warning? Perhaps you may have been down that road many times before and nothing had happened. So would you consider the warning or rely on your own previous knowledge? Too often in history men have refused God's warnings, and racing down the road, they learn too late. Thus, prophecy has more often been rejected than accepted. Orson Pratt warned. Now let me point out some other things which will occur, before the coming of the Son of Man. The Lord has a controversy among all nations of the Gentiles. He has sent to them warning. He has sent his servants to prophesy to them. He has sent them to preach and bear record of the truth. He has sent them to call upon the nations to repent, both high and low, rich and poor, religionist and non-religionist, priest and people, for all of them to repent and receive the gospel in its fullness, and not only to do this, but to gather out from these nations. Will they hear? They will not. We know they will not, but this does not justify us in being slack in delivering our message. We have a responsibility placed upon us, and that responsibility we must fulfill, whether the people here are whether they forbear, we must warn them, so that they shall not have any excuse, when the tribulation shall come which I have named. JD 2150. It has been estimated that nearly 40% of the Bible contains prophecy, and that 80% of those prophecies pertain to the last days. Biblical prophets mention the events of our generation more frequently than any other period in the history of man. Thus we may conclude that there are more warnings, more dangers and more devastations in our time than at any previous time. One of the most important efforts of man, therefore, should be to determine his future, as much as possible and, certainly the best ways through the word of prophecy. But in considering the truthfulness of prophecy, it is essential to determine the validity of the prophet. The position of a prophet is different from any other ecclesiastical office or appointment, because the latter can be obtained by the appointment or election of people, whereas only God can call a man to be a true prophet. Sometimes a distinction has been made between the office of a prophet and the calling of a prophet, yet in reality there should be no distinction. Men who receive neither the spirit nor the gift of prophecy cannot be called prophets, any more than a dodo bird could be called an eagle. Eagles fly and soar through the sky, but a dodo bird, now extinct, never got off the ground. Prophets receive the word and will of the Lord, they can foresee and foretell the future, and they have a true testimony of God. Other men are grounded. It is evident that all men who have the title of prophet are not really true prophets, nor are all the men who claim to be prophets sent from God. Many men boldly declare that they are prophets, and that God has called them to be his mouthpiece on earth, and such claims are sometimes difficult to disprove. Nations have often had both true and false prophets and, the mistake is frequently made of misjudging one for the other, said Joseph Smith. The world always mistook false prophets for true ones, and those that were sent of God, they considered to be false prophets, and hence they killed, stoned, punished and imprisoned the true prophets, and these had to hide themselves in deserts and dens, and caves of the earth, and though the most honorable men of the earth, they banished them from their society as vagabonds. Whilst they cherished, honored and supported knaves, vagabonds, hypocrites, impostors, and the basest of men. TPJS, pages 206-07. Certainly there are ways to determine if a man is a true prophet, and if his message is from God. So why do men fail to understand the difference between the true prophets and the false ones? Simply because they lack the gift of discernment and the spirit of prophecy themselves. If prophets are acting under the influence and spirit of God, then it takes the spirit of God to determine that which is of God, and that which is not. Furthermore, nothing is a greater injury to the children of men, than to be under the influence of a false spirit, when they think they have the spirit of God. TPJS, page 205, even the men who think they are prophets are deceived because they too lack the spirit of God. The many religious creeds and the multitude of powerful ministers and preachers can be, and usually are, mistaken. On the other hand, it is also a great injury when men in high positions of wealth and learning claim that prophecy and revelation have been done away, when in reality the Lord is communing with prophets. They are ignorant of the word of prophecy. 
The things of God can be understood only by the Spirit of God. Men have performed miracles, as the magicians of Pharaoh did for Moses, but that did not prove they were sent of God. Jesus said that many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that work iniquity. Matt. 7 22-23. Herein lies the future destiny of men and of nations. For it is by the Spirit of God, or without it, that they are called to judge God's prophets and prophecies of the latter days.